So this is the very first of my IGTVs on my menopause Mondays. Um, I'm going to cover a series of symptoms of menopause that are particularly affecting me so I can give you good advice hopefully that might help you through the various stages of the menopause too and to deal with the various symptoms that are occurring. Um, I'm going to start today off with anxiety because I think that is something that just happens to so many millions of women across the planet. Um, I'm, an, uh, I'm a mental health coach, I'm also an online health and fitness coach and I've found that by employing some of my therapist strategies combined with some of my healthy and fitness strategies they've had a massive massive effect on me but I also want to just tell you I am actually managing my anxiety at the moment um, I'm not what you would call an anxious person I have been through s some awful times in my life and I've managed to work ways through them but right now I just want to focus specifically on menopause because for some reason you can be you can be one of those people that goes through life with no major problems with stress or anxiety and then the men perimenopause starts and bang it hits you and all of a sudden you're just like this shell of the woman that you used to be and you you just don't understand it's so hard to understand why it suddenly happened and I think a large part of the anxiety that is generated around menopause is because we resist it we resist those feelings of discomfort we dis resist those in fact I'm having a hot flush now and I know why I'm having a hot flush because I'm excited and I've just had a coffee it set it off um so yeah this is this is the menopause I'm really live <laughs> thank you for the blue heart I'm really warm right now and I've probably gone a bit flushed um but yeah it's it's I think when we have a lot of resistance to our symptoms that actually increases our stress too so you know, just looking back historically really quickly, because our lives have changed so much to the, the roles that our grandmothers had and some of our mothers had and our great, great grandmothers had. Um, you know, right now, I mean, I'm a single parent. I work two jobs, super busy, I'm just frazzled. And um, it wasn't until I started to give myself a little bit of grace that and to step back and actually accept the fact that I'm in bloody menopause. Thank you guys, thank you so much for the hearts. Um, that it made me think, hang on a minute, this is a process that's happening to me. And if I can, if I can treat my menopause a bit like pregnancy. So when we're pregnant, if you're absolutely knackered, you go and have a lie down because you know you've got to, you've got your baby growing inside of you and you've got to take care of your baby and you've got to take care of yourself. But through the menopause, we don't do that. Well, we should do. So if you guys are taking an afternoon nap, I celebrate it. I salute you because you're doing the right thing. But a lot of us don't. We work, we're frazzled from our jobs. We're frazzled from the cooking, the cleaning, the, the being a parent, the bloody, bloody blah, blah. I'm also the DIYer. I'm my, I'm my plumber. I'm the electrician. I'm the hedge cutter. I'm the garden mower. You know, our lives are so busy. And I've learned to step back a little bit and actually give myself grace for the fact that I am going through the menopause. So I've started prioritizing my sleep. I don't sleep during the afternoon, that just doesn't suit me. So I think it's one of those things you've got to cut, you've got to work out what suits you best. Um, but I am making sure I go to bed reasonably early and I'm making sure I get seven, seven and a half hours of sleep a night. And as good quality as I can, I do wake up with the odd hot flush but I just sleep with a cool room and so as soon as I feel it coming on I stick my body out of the bed <laughs> and then when I get when it's gone again I cover myself back over and rather than thinking waking up and getting cross because I'm having a hot flush I just accept the fact it's happening go with it I've actually got a little spray can of water and I spray that on myself sometimes too you can go to bed with them um, like a, a cold flannel maybe even put some lavender um, essential oil on it or chamomile essential oil on it so that when you wake up you can just dab yourself and it cools you down it smells gorgeous and it almost makes the hot flush an enjoyable process but it the most important thing about that is it takes that negativity away that you're associating with the hot flush so um you know the, the more we resist it i think the more stress we create around it so um, I don't want to go into massive, massive detail because I, you know, I think it's, I, I don't want these to become super long and in-depth. I'd want to touch on them and if you want me to go deeper, what I'll do is I'll take each individual aspect and I'll address that in a future IGTV. So leave your comments. If you want me to 
there's a specific problem that you've got, let me know. Either uh, send me a private message or leave me a comment and I'll go through them and make sure I include those in future IGTVs. But so to sort of like cover my story briefly, right now in the morning I'm waking up and I can feel that fizz. I can feel it. I'm feeling overwhelmed when I wake up and I know that that is just because of my hormones going a little bit haywire. Now, I'm a proponent of trying to do things as naturally as possible. It's just the way I am. If HRT suits you or bioidentical HRT suits you, stick with it. I like to try and stay as natural as possible because I feel... I know this is contentious. It's a bit like antidepressants. They don't... I'm, I'm not entirely sure they're dealing with the cause issue. And at some point, we've got to deal with the cause issue. However, I know HRT and uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, they, they're enabling your body to go into the menopause without such strong reactions to it. However, I th a lot of me thinks is if we actually accept the fact that we're going through the menopause and we allow ourselves to slow down a little bit and we take some of the pressure off ourselves we might not need the HRT. My doctor was dead set on me having it. Um, my mum reacted really badly to it. I just decided osteoporosis, I do weight training exercises to help combat that. I don't want to increase my risks of cancer. Um, my heart health, I exercise for that. So I'm taking positive steps to deal with it naturally rather than going down the artificial hormone route. For me, it's just not my jam but having said that if it works for you keep doing it you know i just wanted to put that out there because i will talk about the natural type of therapies because i i, I have no experience of hrt or uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy um but for me i can feel that fizz in the morning and as soon as i wake up i have a hot flush but that's generally because when we first wake up in the morning we our bodies give off a surge of cortisol which our stress is our stress hormone and that, because it's a stress hormone, of course, if we've got a tendency to feel anxious, because our hormones are all over the shop, um, it's going to set off that fizzing. And for me, I get up and I will do deep breathing. I always deep breathe as soon as I feel anxious or anxiety coming on. It makes a massive difference. It's so cleansing. And it's one of the simplest things that you can do. Um, if you don't do deep breathing, I highly recommend you do it. Uh, take a slow, deep breath in, breath in through your nose. Uh, to say the count of ten, uh, 8 or 10, hold it for around 10 or 12 seconds and then breathe it out really slowly through your mouth for as slow as you can manage and do around about 5 reps of that. You'll find it will make you feel so much better. Um, it also stimulates the lymphatic system. Uh, the lymphatic system doesn't have its own pump like a heart system, cardiac system does, so it helps you to de detox too. So deep breathing is just like the jam as far as I'm concerned. I exercise daily. Uh, exercise has got me through the deepest darkest times of my life in fact I I credit exercise for the fact that I'm still here and I commit to my health so exercise is an absolute non-negotiable I brush my teeth I exercise it just happens if I have to get up super early to do it I bloody do it because I know it's good for my brain health um, it also helps to reduce the symptoms of menopause it strengthens your bones it keeps your heart healthy it's going to reduce your risks of cancer. Um, it gobbles up stress hormones. And if we haven't got so much cortisol going around our body, we're going to feel better. So um, also I've realized by tracking, because I follow a nutrition plan, and by tracking my food and drink, I've, I can see the triggers that set me off with a, say, a hot flush or an anxiety symptom or, you know, those sense uh, feelings of anxiety. Um, sugary things do it. Alcohol does it. Dark chocolate does it. I love dark chocolate. Coffee does it. I love coffee. I still do drink coffee, but I try to reduce the amount of coffee that I drink. And I always have a pint of water before I drink my coffee. And that actually helps to reduce that sense of fizzing that happens. But things that you can do. Okay, so I've gone over deep breathing. Exercise. Exercise, exercise, exercise. If you don't want to do like workouts like I do, Go out and walk, but do something that's going to raise your... You ideally actually want to do a combination of cardio, hit, and when, when weight training, strength training. Because 
combined they're going to give you a massive endorphin release they're going to strengthen your bones they're going to strengthen your heart they're going to detox you they're going to get rid of cortisol they're going to make you feel amazing it's a no-brainer 20 to 30 minutes of a, a multi combined workout program bloody works honestly I, it, it does work I have ladies in my groups that do these things and all of a sudden they're feeling like they're on fire. I'm 49, and yeah, I'm going through the menopause. I, I'm feeling that little bit of anxiety. However, I've probably not been fitter in my whole life. So bear that in mind. Also helps keep rid of the belly bloat, but I'll deal with that more in another program. Um, meditation. Now, I'm not a great meditator, but I do like listening to relaxing meditation tracks when I'm going to bed. Um, there are a couple of apps. It's uh, Headspace is a great one. Uh, Calm is a great one. Binaural Beats. Now, if you've not discovered Binaural Beats yet, they are oh, awesome. So it's B-I-A-N-A-U-R-A-L. Go and just do a search on YouTube. You'll find all sorts of different binaural beats types of music. And basically what it is, you need headphones to it too because the left ear and the right ear have different levels of hertz so the sound waves that go through them there's a slight disconnect so say you might have 210 hertz in your left ear you might have 200 hertz in your right ear and it's that disconnect that has a well it has a multitude of effects on the brain one of them is it helps you sleep so melatonin is a hormone in our body that makes us sleep more easily on studies with binaural beats people saw, and I think it was a 97.7% increase in the secretion of melatonin for people that listen to binaural beats between 15 and 20 minutes daily. It helps reduce cortisol, the stress hormone, massively. Also helps you improve your focus and concentration. So, you know, if, if stress and anxiety is something that you're really struggling with, tune in to something on YouTube with binaural beats. I love the Wayne Dyer meditations as well. I just find his whole noise in the background is just so calming. Um, so yeah, one of those meditation apps. Do R&R, &R, take time out during your day, even if it's five minutes. If you work in an office and you're super busy, just go for a walk, go, you know, just get outside if you can do, get into the sunlight. Ultraviolet is so important for our mental health on so many different levels. People don't understand the power of ultraviolet it is absolutely crucial and I know this sounds a bit hippy dippy but if you can go barefoot on the grass do that too because you get negative ions from the earth which help counteract the positive ions that surround all our electrical equipment and our phones and everything else that we're literally addicted to these days um, we're not designed to be surrounded by so many positive electromagnetic forces so if you can go out and be a bit of a barefoot hippy even hug a tree or two it's gonna make you feel a heck of a lot better um, what else what else drink lots of water so you need to drink um you want to weigh yourself in pounds divide the result by two and that is how many fluid ounces you should be drinking of water a day it just keeps you cleansed helps if you're if you're not in nutritional stress or dehydrated stress in your body you're not going to be triggering cortisol because stress is stress wherever it comes from it could be a complaining boss it could be noisy kids it could be living next to a busy road it can be nutritional and it can be dehydration. So stress in all its forms causes cortisol and adrenaline and those are what you want to reduce. So by having more water, you're flushing your system and you're keeping it cleaner and you're helping reduce the nutritional and the dehydration stress on your body. Um, I think that's about it. So slow down. That's it. Slow down. Take good care of yourself. Move. Drink water. Prioritise sleep. Soap operas are really not that important. Um, go barefoot, hug a tree. Um, listen to some binaural beats. Find your favourite meditation app. And commit to trying. Commit to you. Because when you commit to you, your anxiety levels will go down. And when you get some menopause-related symptoms, just be kind to yourself. They're going to happen. When we resist them, we're creating more stress. So it's a bit of it's a bit of a game, but at the end of the day, we're in that stage of life where Mother Nature is telling us to slow down a bit. It's a bit of an inconvenience because our lives aren't like that anymore. They're nuts. But if you can slow down, take it easy, 
be kind to yourself is going to make a massive massive difference so i will see you next monday for the next episode um if there's anything specific you want me to go over i will be covering most of the symptoms of, of menopause in any case but if you've got specific comments either leave it in the comments below or send me a private message and i will make sure to include it on my one of my future igtvs hashtag menopause mondays catch you soon